please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Lock Supplemental. I'm enjoying a newfound freedom, certainly from a creative stance of us now producing crime shorts on YouTube. A great way for us to blast more perps in a more concise and effective manner. Link below. They're all stored in box arse. Welcome everyone to the Halls of Injustice. Today we welcome inmate number 168 to the ISO cubes. Inmate number 168 is going to be here for quite some time. Inmate number 168 has committed two horrific crimes. Inmate number 168 was busted in a courtroom on video as well, so we get to see a little extra about this individual, this cretin, this scumbag, who's going to be spending a rather lengthy amount of his life, the rest of it, in one of these lovely ISO cubes. Inmate number 168's name is Ellis Nelson Ortiz Neves. Yes, he has a lot of names. Inmate number 168 seems a lot easier. To have names, well, it's a very human thing, isn't it? I don't think you're allowed to call yourself one of those. Now, unlike other Halls of Injustices where I have framed it certain ways so you can understand a bit more about who this person is, this cretin, uh, we don't actually have too much to go on. So instead, I'm going to tell you that I found this first off on Twitter. The reason why is I saw a video doing its rounds in a courtroom of a man. Well, cretin. And it was that cretin that drew my attention. I had to ask people on Twitter if they knew who this was because I couldn't find them. Thankfully, Twitter and somebody else found him. Because I'm English, my Google search will not bring up American crimes anywhere near as quickly as those in America. So you guys, thank you for that, did me a solid. So we're gonna dive straight into the crimes committed by the cretin, Ellis Nelson Ortiz Neves, AKA inmate number 168. On June 13th, 2017, Ellis Nelson Ortiz Neves was looking after his girlfriend's four-year-old boy called Giovanni Medias. The reason why is because the girlfriend had gone to work. Ellis is not a babysitter. Ellis has no time for children. At the age of 25, he let that child know. Trigger warning, by the way, for those who might be distressed by what I'm now about to say, as the child is the victim. Kent County deputies were called to a Gaines Township house trailer, where Ortiz Neves was left to care for several children under the age of 11. Deputies found the boy actively dying on the kitchen floor. Actively. An autopsy showed he had died from internal bleeding caused by an abdominal tear. It was an injury that would have been caused by an adult, not a child. Those are the words of Laura A. Clifton, the prosecutor for Kent County. Defense attorney Jeffrey Courts called the boy's death a terrible tragedy, but that his client was innocent. Ortiz Neves was arrested and charged with murder, first degree child abuse as well. The defense also said that police focused only on Ortiz Neves and did not look at the others in the home, including the victim's 10 year old brother. Quote, there was another person in that house that could have caused those injuries, his brother. Nelson loved Giovanni. What Nelson has been accused of just doesn't make sense. The injury was a two inch tear in the mesentery, which attaches the stomach, small intestine, and other organs to the posterior wall of the abdomen. Not an easy injury to inflict by a 10 year old. Megius also had injuries on the top of his head, lower back, buttocks, two broken ribs that were in the process of healing, which means he had suffered injuries over a prolonged period of time, previous injuries from other incidents. Several hours after he was found, he was pronounced unalive. On January 12th, 2018, Ellis Nelson Ortiz Neves was found guilty of felony murder and first degree child abuse. Quote from the Kent County Circuit Court Judge Mark Trussock, you are the lowest form of human life that I've ever been able to observe or see. You are a monster and quite frankly, you are evil. What you did was sickening and disgusting. You should never be allowed out of prison. Ortiz Neves, being the man that he is, didn't take to this very well, and this is where the video that was being shared on Twitter is applicable. I ain't gonna let you sit here and say no, no crazy shit talk. about me, man. No, oh, man, because he's he, he staying shit he don't even know, man. Sure. The testimony showed that you put this child and other no. child in a shower with ice cold water. Anybody says anything back there around? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
He later returned to the courtroom 10 minutes later without incident. Trusuk sentenced him to a mandatory life in prison without possibility of parole for felony murder charge. He was also sentenced to between 80 and 150 years for first degree child abuse. Quote, there is no question whatsoever that you committed this murder and that you beat this little boy to death. What you did to this child, this little four-year-old innocent boy is absolutely beyond belief. Ortiz Neves told the courtroom, despite what anyone believes, I am going to continue to state my innocence. Nora Villarreal Milero, the boy's maternal grandmother, said the family celebrated what would have been Giovanni's fifth birthday, and instead of celebrating, we took him balloons, birthday balloons, to the cemetery. My grandson got justice today, but it won't bring him back. Now this is a crime committed in 2017 with a resolution in 2018. Why then are we now bringing it up in 2023? Well, that's because he has been appealing ever since. He has been appealing the sentence. He believes his innocence enough to keep doing this and he's well within his right to do so. So that is where we're going to go next, to the appeals. On December the 2nd, 2019, Ellis Nelson Ortiz Neal appealed his convictions for felony murder and first degree child abuse, saying his attorney was ineffective and some trial testimony was based on junk science. He also objected to jurors hearing about his past episodes of DV and violence towards children. In a 10-page decision, the Michigan Court of Appeals disagreed, quote, We find no merit in any of these contentions. It took the jury one hour before returning the original guilty verdict two years prior to this appeal. He currently is serving time at the Ernest Seabrooks Correctional Facility in Muscogon Heights. That is failed appeal number one. And it's important we get this one out of the way because he's not done. Because there was another appeal filed on the 15th of September 2022. The following is a seven page document and I want to go through it so we have a bit of context. Petitioner Ellis Nelson Ortiz Neves, a Michigan state prisoner currently confined at the Bellamy Creek Correctional Facility in Ionia, Michigan, filed a petition of habeas corpus through counsel pursuant to that petitioner is challenging his jury trial convictions in the Kent County Circuit Court for first degree felony murder and first degree child abuse. The trial court sentenced petitioner as a fourth habitual offender to an 80 to 150 year term of incarceration to be served concurrently to his life sentence for the murder conviction. Ortiz Neves at one. Because the petition is insufficient on its face, it will be dismissed without prejudice. Oh, this is interesting. Six pages to go and I have no intention of skipping any of it. If they titled this Harry Potter and the Child Abuser, I'd still buy it and read it. Background. Petitioner appealed his convictions by right, raising nine issues which included various theories of ineffective assistance of trial counsel. The Michigan Court of Appeals affirmed his convictions in an unpublished opinion. The Michigan Supreme Court denied petitioner's application for leave to appeal. Petitioner then filed a motion for relief from judgment in the state trial court, raising an additional 15 grounds. Petitioner's effort to obtain collateral relief concluded with the Michigan Supreme Court's denial of his application for leave to appeal on the 3rd of May 2022. This petition for habeas corpus relief was filed on the 1st of September 2022. Habeas corpus means you shall have the body. That is, the judge must have the person charged with the crime brought into the courtroom to hear what's being charged with. I didn't know that until this moment. Thought I'd share it with all of you. 2. Discussion. Promptly after the filing of a petition for habeas corpus, the court must undertake a preliminary review of the petition to determine whether it plainly appears from the face of the petition and exhibits annexed to it that the petitioner is not entitled to relief in the district court. Rule 4, rules governing all that. If after preliminary consideration the court determines that the petitioner is not entitled to relief, the court must summarily dismiss the petition. Federal courts may also dismiss a habeas petition that is legally sufficient on its face. Among other requirements, Rule 2 of the rules governing that cases directs a habeas petitioner to specify all pertinent grounds for relief and the facts supporting each ground. Notice pleading is not sufficient, and it cites a particular case for precedent. The petition before the court does not comply with Rule 2c and it is thus legally insufficient. It reports the grounds for relief petitioner raised in the state appellate. appellate? courts on direct appeal and in a bid for collateral relief, and when the court rules on the various pleadings, the petition concludes with the generic assertion that petitioner is being detained unconstitutionally because the trial court denied the petitioner's constitutional right to a fair trial in violation of the 6th and 14th Amendments 
to the US Constitution, for the reasons set forth. Nowhere, however, does Petitioner explain which, if any of the grounds for relief he raised in the state courts, are the basis for his prayer for habeas corpus relief. Even if Petitioner intended to raise all 24 issues in a habeas petition, he provides no supporting facts for any of the listed grounds. Where a court is unable to discern the nature of Petitioner's habeas claims, the court has no way to ascertain the errors of fact or law that may be raised in Petitioner's filing and the petition is subject to dismissal, citing another case for precedent. So it is here, the court cannot determine what errors of fact or law might entitle Petitioner to habeas corpus relief. The petition does not comply with requirements of Rule 2C and must be dismissed. However, the dismissal is without prejudice to Petitioner filing a petition that does not comply with the pertinent rules. Petitioner has ample time to file a petition without risking the expiration of the one-year statute of limitations under that. Petitioner's conviction became final on the 28th of July 2020, when his time to file a petition for that word I cannot pronounce in the United States Supreme Court expired, 90 days after the Michigan Supreme Court denied Petitioner leave to appeal in his direct appeal. I'm now going to go straight to the order part, because this is the best bit. Order 3, that is. For the reasons set forth above, it is ordered that the petition for a writ of habeas corpus is dismissed without prejudice. Dismissed without prejudice means it's done. You cannot appeal this ever again. Bitch tits, you can stay in your shitty little cell for the rest of your miserable life. You're guaranteed three meals unless you break the rules. You're guaranteed a bed, not much of a comfy one. Medical aid if you require some of that. Hell, you can get some education if the system allows for it. Your life, I hope, is long, lonely, and miserable, as is only deserving for somebody like you. Ellis, Neves, Ortiz, Nelson, whatever your bloody name is. Inmates number 168. Tata, bitch. Oh, and one last thing. For some odd reason, there was an article more recently. Yeah, it's just one that shows the video that was actually from the original sentencing. Why on earth you felt to use it six years later is a mystery to me. 